Hi friends, Rob Renfro, President of Good News. Merry Christmas, and I hope you are preparing for a wonderful celebration of the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Recently, I've been getting a number of questions, important questions, and you may have some of them about the future of the United Methodist Church. I thought I'd take just a few brief moments and share with you my thoughts. The first question is this, what's the status of the protocol, and is it likely to be passed when we hold general conference. You may remember that when the protocol was proposed, every caucus group within the United Methodist Church came out in favor of it. Every progressive centrist and traditionalist caucus group said, not a perfect deal, but we can live with it, and it's certainly better than continuing this 50 years of fighting. None of the groups that have come out in favor of it have rescinded their support, so yes, it's still on track. Is it likely to be passed when we hold general conference? Again, the answer is yes. Nearly all of the traditionalist delegates here in the U.S. and all around the world are in favor of it. That will get us very close to 50%. And if just 30% of the centrists and the progressives vote for us, that'll get us to something like 70%. And we wouldn't be surprised if even more of centrists and progressives vote for it. Still on track very likely to be passed when we hold general conference. That leads to the second question. Will general conference be held in 2022? That's a little more difficult to answer. What we know for certain is that the Commission on General Conference met recently and they are planning and preparing to hold an in-person general conference later in 2022, late August, early. September. Now, with COVID, nothing's for certain. The Commission is committed to, and it's only right, that we have a truly representative General Conference. That means delegates coming from all over the world. Will they be able to get here? That means they'll have to be inoculated and they'll have to receive their visas. There may be some challenges in that. One thing I can tell you is that Good News, along with other traditionalist groups, are working hard to make certain that all the delegates internationally who want to be inoculated can be inoculated. We're willing to pay for that to happen. And we're doing all that we can to make certain that they receive their visas. So right now, it looks like, yes, we will hold a general conference in 2022. The Commission on General Conference may have some difficult decisions to make along the way, so please join me in praying for them as they seek God's will and they help us step into a better future for all of us. So that leads to the final question, what about the Global Methodist Church and what about the role of good news going forward? I can't tell you how excited I am about the Global Methodist Church. Some of our best minds and greatest leaders have been working hard to create the structure and the mission of that Global Methodist Church. It's going to be a missional movement that is founded on the scriptures, that is centered on Christ, that's seeking the power of the Holy Spirit, and that exists to bring men and women and boys and girls to saving faith in Jesus and then discipling them in that faith, all the while having a real heart of compassion for the marginalized and disenfranchised. You're going to love being a part of it. You're going to love having godly men and women serving as our leaders in the future. One thing else I think you'll really enjoy is that in the Global Methodist Church, your local congregation will have much more autonomy and will pay less in apportionments. That's because the Global Methodist Church believes the denomination exists for the betterment and the empowerment of the local congregation it doesn't believe that the local congregation exists for the boards and agencies and the bureaucrats of the denomination. What about the role of good news? Well, until the protocol is passed, our role remains what it has been for the past 50 years, and that is preparing traditionalist delegates to go to general conference and vote in such a way that we're able to step into a faithful future. We'll continue that role until the battle is won. After the protocol is passed, I believe there are going to be many traditional local congregations and pastors who aren't going to want to disrupt their local church. 
they're going to be tempted to just go with the flow and say, well, maybe things aren't going to be all that bad in the post-separation UMC. And the truth is, they are being told this by centrists. They're being told there will always be a place for you. You and your views will always be honored. They may even believe it when they say it, but it's not true. We've seen this over and over again. And the role of good news will be to go to many local churches, to go to many annual conferences, and help people understand what's really going to happen if they remain. So I know it's very difficult to be patient. We've been fighting this battle for so many years. The general conference gets put off and put off, and some people have just given up. But I want you to see it a different way. Every other mainline denomination has changed its sexual ethics, but not United Methodist. And in every other mainline denomination, the traditionalists have lost. They have had to leave their denomination somewhat with their tails between their legs and begging to be able to keep their property and sometimes paying exorbitant fees to do so. This is not our story. We've been able to hold the line and we have negotiated not a perfect deal, but a very good deal for our churches so that we'll be able to leave with our property and pay nothing for it, so that we'll be able to leave in mass to create this new God-anointed mission and movement. And the reason we've been able to do that is because groups like Good News have led the way and fought the battle, and the reason we've been able to do that is because of you, because of your prayers, because of your encouragement, because of your faithful and generous giving. I want to say thank you for that sincerely. I also want you to remember that next year may be the most critical year in the history of the Methodist Church. And I want to ask you to continue to empower us to do the work that we need to do so that we can have a faithful future together. Please do all you can to give generously before year's end. And please be praying for us and praying for the Methodist Church throughout the next year. Merry Christmas. God bless you.